Don't be alarmed. I need you to stay calm and don't let on that anyone is talking to you. Start making your way off the bus. You don't have any reason to trust me, but I need you to believe that I'm here to guide you. I'm here to help you find the vault. In a moment, you'll be greeted by a funny little robot. Do everything he says. You'll know what I mean when it happens. I'll contact you again soon. Well, we're here. <laughs> Don't worry about saying goodbye. I'm sure we'll be doing this all again soon enough. <laughs> ah, get off my bus. The first place you go once Marcus pushes you off of his bus is, uh, I would argue, one of the most iconic places in the entire continuity of Borderlands, Firestone. But while it is an iconic location, the history of Firestone is something unknown, told to us only through the environment and indirect dialogue. And so for this reason, it must be investigated. Today, we investigate the small Pandoran town of Firestone. So right off the bat, well, right off the bus, I should say, we learn one little detail about Firestone. It's a backwater. There are no guards or turrets to protect the settlement. The place around it and in it is barren, empty, messy, and unkempt. There are no corporate influences, but there are signs that the conglomerates once held sway over the town, but have since left. And, of course, bandits roam the entirety of the arid badlands, and we know what kind of trouble they bring. I mean, really, on the surface, Firestone seems to have faded from relevancy long before we ever even started stepped foot in the town. This is even further backed up by the town's dinky little sign posted outside of their main gate. It reads, in messy writing, Firestone, population 24. And while it might not tell us much, upon a closer inspection, behind 24, there are signs that its number used to be larger, at least three digits by the looks. And we can actually decode the exact number if we go to the very same sign in Borderlands 2. From what we can tell, at its height, Firestone was home to 273 people, which is actually quite a lot, and if a town had hundreds of people at one point, it must have been quite the place full of activity and opportunities. But as of now, any past glories Firestone might have had, well, they have all fallen away to bandits, better routes, etc, etc. However, the sign might indicate that at the time of Borderlands 1, there are 24 people living in and around Firestone, and while that might have been true for then, in the pre-sequel, a game that takes place between 1 and 2, we can find a flyer that reads, Visit Firestone, Population 1. Meaning that by the time of Hyperion's rise to power, there is only one actual person that inhabits Firestone anymore, Dr. Zed. So it then begs the question, what happened to the other 23? I mean, to be fair, it, it, it is true that the pre-sequel takes place after Borderlands 1, so population numbers are to change between then and then, and it's still possible that there were 24 people in Firestone around the time of Borderlands 1, but here's the thing. I find it very hard to believe that no one would show their faces to the OG Vault Hunters after they arrived in Firestone, because if it were the case and there there are over 20 people in Firestone during our time there, I think at least one other person besides Zed would have had the nerve to strike up a conversation with us face to face. So if anything, the sign we can read during Borderlands 1 must be heavily outdated. And I mean, to be fair, if you're not going to put in the effort to keep the town up and running and in tip-top shape, you're probably not going to put in the effort to make sure a sign is up to date with your current population count. And it is possible 
people that, while there might have been 23 others at one point, most probably died off to local bandit raids, there is a sizable graveyard and many a dead body around Zed Shed, if they did not leave prior. Regardless, by the time of the pre-sequel, Zed is all that remains. But another question might emerge from the ashes of the last. If Zed is all that remains, well, why does he stay? What's so important about Firestone that he continues to operate there even after everyone else took their leave? Well, during the events of Borderlands 2, when we make our way to the Arid Nexus and after Zed was booted from his home to make way for Hyperion, we can find an echo log that tells us that Firestone was actually Zed's place of birth. Hey, Roland. I appreciate your offer to move into Sanctuary, but I got a lot of stuff here in Firestone. Uh, Sanctuary sounds nice and all, but Firestone's my home. I made my decision. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in the city I was born. Firestone. Attention, citizen of Firestone. Die. Oh, piss. Uh, on second thought, Rowan, uh, when's the soonest you can come pick me up? Meaning that Firestone itself is quite old, and, well, just looking at Zed's appearance, we can get a rough estimate as to how old the place actually is. Upon closer inspection using a scope and whatnot, we can see that Zed has wrinkles in and around his forehead and his eyes. And to add to it, the sides of his hair are starting to turn gray, which are both signs of a man beyond his prime. So judging by that, I can assume that Zed is between the age of 40 or 45 to around 50 years old. So we can possibly place Firestone's founding date to around 50 to 60 years prior to the events of Border. Lands 1. And it might not seem that important considering what Firestone is to us today, but when it comes to the entirety of everything we know about Pandora pre-Borderlands 1, Firestone might have been one of the first human settlements on Pandora, which puts a lot of things into perspective. Like for one, we know Marcus had a shop there, one that's been shuttered for a long time before our arrival. Perhaps then, Firestone was the location of his first ever gun store after he came to Pandora. Another thing, TK Baja, a corporate fugitive who I've talked about before in the past, settled near Firestone probably because it was really all there was at the time of his arrival on the planet. And due to its proximity to a main highway, Firestone was probably settled as a town looking to take advantage of the influx of traders, corporate employees, and obviously vault hunters brought by Dahl's arrival in the system, which actually marks Dahl's arrival on Pandora sometime roughly 50 years before the events of Borderlands 1. I mean, who knew that gray hair and one phrase can change the entire outlook on the history of a planet, but well, here we are. If you have any questions or comments about this video, Borderlands or its lore, you can leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to read each and every one of them. Thanks for watching.